in the, the breaking home on grocery store. This is the farm. The food comes from the farm. I'm at the farm. And it's like there's some loopholes with uh, getting a membership and stuff. But like you get, there are so many birds on this farm. And this, here's one of them. <laughs> That's a goose. Man, some of the best meat I've ever had actually is hunted geese. Uh, for my friend Wes Atkinson, who was on my um, podcast. You know, that out. But yeah, I wanted to give you all a sneak peek of this. How cool is this? Isn't this like the future of farming? You basically go to the farm and buy the food, and I'm going to go to the garden after this and pick my own greens for my green juice tomorrow. But this is what I got in my bag so far. Two-headed chicken bone broth. And these chickens, and this stuff is mad. This is arguably the most powerful bone broth I had. I haven't had that exact one. Fresh, raw milk. And what I mean by raw milk, I mean like it just comes from the other. And that's it. The treatment, the pasteurization, the homogenization, none of that. Probably some very healthy, happy cows on grass. And this is it. I'm gonna probably load up on these peaches. It is stone fruit season if you're in Colorado. And you know, one of my friend, my farmer friends in Georgia, he would just be offended if you refrigerate his tomatoes. And there's a bunch of grocery stores that have epic peaches in Colorado right now because they're growing. They're like going off the chain in Colorado. But I'm offended because a lot of those, a lot of these people are refrigerating them. These people are not. Thank you, these people, for not refrigerating my peaches or tomatoes. The tomatoes are still on the vine out there, actually. <laughs> Let me go pick some greens. <laughs> so this kale, I think this is called like dino kale or dino kale. Kind of, I used to call it dinosaur kale. And it reminds me, for all the people that might be watching this video, I'm curious how many of y'all know about dinosaur wieners. Back in the Rob Bras days, and that was a particularly ripe speckled banana that it was ripe and good enough if you ate 30 of them a day, you'd be okay. <laughs> uh, but it, out here, and on the topic of that, actually, I'm pretty certain this is an heirloom tomato variety. And I was on the way here, I was discussing what heirloom means. And one of the things that means, I believe the seed in this tomato can grow a replicate of the plant that it came from. Whereas most seeds from most fruits to the grocery store, from my understanding, are arguably sterile. Look at these greens. And this is just green shard, is that right? Do you know what this is? I think no. it's green shard, like the Swiss chard. Yeah, it might be. Well, you know what's gonna happen is we're gonna put a lot of this in the juicer mixed with some apple, lemon, and ginger tomorrow, and we're gonna get real hot. On green juice. And anyways, yeah, this is five dollars, five dollars a, a, a pound. And I'm talking about you can get five, you can get a pound of basil, the best basil you've ever had, for five dollars. Something suspiciously cool going on. Here. <laughs> Another cool thing, y'all are probably used to your spinach looking something like this, maybe with a little less bug bites because it was sprayed with poison. I mean, when I say y'all, I'm talking about people that buy conventional groceries. But let me show you uh, what uh, spinach actually looks like from the stem. Now, my question is when I juice it, how many nutrients are still in here? Imagine a good bit. It's kind of like the bone marrow of the plant. It's kind of what bone broth is, isn't it? It's like bone juice. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure how you want to think about it, but I'll tell you what. Bone, this bone broth mixed with these greens is some good medicine. When, when is that app coming out where you can smell what I'm holding? <laughs> When's that app? <laughs> I know the cameraman can smell it. Yep, that's enough basil for a few days. You know, in some of the Blue Zone long-lived cultures, there's a cool book called uh, Healthy at 100 from John Robbins. And allegedly, so some of those cultures, and one in particular, if, the, if, you don't, if they're not eating the greens they picked that day, they, they would, I think they think they're worse for you than not eating them. Meaning, Fresh, fresh and local, seasonal. When your soil's orgasming and giving birth to these fruits and vegetables, it's time to eat them. And having them sit on a shelf and shipped, let's just say some longevity experts don't even believe in touching that stuff. So on my way, I was talking about how alive that garden is, because it is, I mean, there is a vibrancy in there. There's so many bugs too. And of course, like I wanted to, I think it's like a Native American farming proverb I've heard. I mean, a third is for the land, a third is for the animals and insects, and a third is for you. 
And um, anyways, I got to kill a mosquito on the way and I just leave it there. It's warm me out of mosquitoes. This blood is not for sure. <laughs> Any natural of mosquito remedies out there? I've heard all kinds of theories. I guess that's based on blood type. It's based on how many bananas you eat. I don't know. I know when, um, when I hang out with people that think they get bit by mosquitoes a lot, I typically don't. So I think it has something to do with it. Do you think you're prone to getting a lot of mosquito bites? Because then you probably are. Look up the observer effect. Look into it. And actually, the results might change based on like, how you're looking for everything. I got some eggs, but I also got... Well, you know what's cool is that this is all like r raw beef trimmings, um, and they sell it as dog food. And uh, right, I love it. The one issue is I'm not sure if she's hungry for other <laughs> dog foods after eating that. Um, but one thing I wanted to note about the coolness of this joint is it's on the honor system. I like, I like that a lot. I feel like this this whole system is like bringing it back to like the roots of humanity before huge civilizations, more like tribal community living. And I think they're doing it all right. So if you want the info at Yelman Boulder, let me know. I'm not sure if they even have room for more members or not, but comment, DM, whatever, whatever platform this is on, reach out. We'll say hi, we'll figure it out. about this juicer is it's a slow press juicer and to my understanding a lot less oxidation takes place. It's the Omega juicer, maybe we'll put a link where you can get it on Amazon, but basically this juicer compared to like the Breville that spins really fast, allegedly that creates a lot of oxidation and I don't think it juices it as much. But when you're dealing with like dense greens like this, I think the juicer makes a difference. I mean look at this basil, it's flowering. To go back to the Rob Ross days, you know we've been juicing for a long time, and honestly, I think it's one of the best supplements on earth. If you can go to the garden, get fresh greens that day or the day before, put them in a slow press juicer, and drink that juice, or chew that juice to chew the juice, so you get the salivary amylase going. Man, one of the best things I've ever done for my body over the years. Dan McDonald, thanks for planting that seed years ago in your RV. I put it in the blender to mix it all up one last time. It's like a stirring. There we go. Uh, sometimes I get nervous before drinking these because sometimes they are so potent. Like I've gotten like chills up my spine drinking these before. Mm. Pretty, uh, because I put so much cucumber in there, and I had a fat fresh cucumber on the farm yesterday. It's pretty epic. You wanna try it? I can film your reaction. Mm -hmm. This first taste of a homemade Daniel, Danimal green juice, gorilla juice. Wow. <laughs> it's powerful. Have yeah. you ever had a green juice like that? No. Like from a store? That's the difference. You make your own green juice, something special happens. By <laughs> work and a juicery cup of months before I came here. We never had this. No, this is something Wait, else. did you work in one in Israel? Or in Japan? Yep. Is, okay, yeah, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably a lot more watered down, I'm imagining, not as fresh greens. I mean, oh, that's yeah. the issue with the green juice place versus going to the farm yourself. Yep. Cheers. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Good next time. She loves this. She loves it. All right, cool.